welcome to NAPOD, where we provide NA speaker meetings and workshops in a podcast. We are an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us to be self-supporting by visiting NAPOD.xyz. Look for the donate link and drop a dollar or two in the virtual basket. If you're also an AA or have friends that are, please tell them about our other podcast, Sobercast. Sobercast features AA speakers and workshops in the same format as NAPOD. We upload a new speaker every day, and it's easy to subscribe by searching for Sobercast, that's two words, on any podcast player app or go to Sobercast.com. Enjoy the podcast, and thanks for listening. Aloha, my name is Steve. I'm an addict. I am also the co-chair of the Hawaii Region Support Committee for WCNA 31. Can you hear me? There you go. Aloha, my name is Charlie. I'm an addict. And I'm the other co-chair for the Hawaii Region Support Committee for WCNA 31. And we would like to welcome you, all of you, to the Saturday Night Unity Banquet at WCNA 31. Can we open the meeting with a moment of silence, followed by the serenity prayer? God, Steve from Scotland has been asked to read Who is an Addict in English. I am Steve from Edinburgh in Scotland and I'm an addict. Hey. Who's an addict? Most of us do not have to think twice about this question. We know. Our whole life and thinking was centered in drugs in one form or another. The getting and using and finding ways and means to get more. We live to use and use to live. Very simply, an addict is a man or woman whose life is controlled by drugs. We are people in the grip of a continuing and progressive illness whose ends are always the same. Jails, institutions, and death. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Frank from Germany has been asked to read what is the NA program in German. Hello. My name is Frank. I'm an addict from Hamburg, Germany. My home group is named Enjoy Your Recovery. Was bedeutet das Narcotics Anonymous Programm? Er nahe ist eine gemeinnützige Gemeinschaft von Männern und Frauen, für die Drogen zum Hauptproblem geworden sind. Wir sind süchtige auf dem Weg der Genesung, die regelmäßig zusammenkommen und sich gegenseitig helfen, clean zu bleiben. Dies ist ein Programm völliger Abstinenz von allen Drogen. Es gibt nur eine einzige Voraussetzung für die Zugehörigkeit, das Verlangen mit Drogen aufzuhören. Wir empfehlen dir aufgeschlossen zu sein und Bereitschaft zu zeigen. Unser Programm besteht aus bestimmten Grundsätzen, die so einfach sind, dass wir ihnen in unserem täglichen Leben folgen können. Das Wichtigste daran ist, sie funktionieren. Mit NA sind keinerlei Verpflichtungen verbunden. Wir sind unabhängig von anderen Organisationen. Wir haben keine Aufnahmegebühren oder Mitgliedsbeiträge. Keine Verpflichtungen zu unterschreiben und niemandem müssen Versprechen gemacht werden. Wir haben keine Verbindung zu Justizbehörden, politischen oder religiösen Gruppen und stehen niemals unter Aufsicht. Mitmachen können alle, ohne Rücksicht auf Alter, Rasse, sexuelle Identität, Glauben, Religion oder fehlende Religionszugehörigkeit. Uns interessiert weder, welche oder wie viel Drogen du genommen hast, 
wie du dir deine Suchtmittel beschafft hast, was du in der Vergangenheit getan hast, noch wie viel oder wie wenig du besitzt. Uns interessiert einzig und allein, wie du dein Problem angehen willst und wie wir dir dabei helfen können. Die Neuankömmlinge sind die wichtigsten Personen bei jedem Meeting, denn wir können nur bewahren, was wir haben, indem wir es weitergeben. Aus unseren Gruppenerfahrungen haben wir gelernt, dass diejenigen, die regelmäßig zu unseren Meetings kommen, clean bleiben. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frank. Basim from Bahrain has been asked to read Why Are We Here in Arabic? Hi, family. My name is Basim Ahmadik. I'm going to read Why You Are Here in Arabic. What are we here? قبل المجيء إلى زمالة المدمنين المجهولين لم يكن باستطاعتنا أن ندير حياتنا ولم يكن باستطاعتنا أن نستمتع بالحياة مثل ما يفعل الآخرون كنا بحاجة إلى شيء مختلف واعتقدنا بأننا قد وجدناه في المخدرات وضعنا تعاطي فوق مصلحة عائلات وزوجاتنا وأزواجنا وأطفالنا كنا مضطرين للحصول على المخدرات بأي ثمن نسبنا في الأذى عظيم تسببنا في أذى عظيم الكثير من الناس ولكن أدينا أنفسنا أكثر من أي شخص آخر ومن خلال عدم قدرتنا على تقبل مسؤولياتنا الشخصية كنا في الواقع نخلق لأنفسنا المشاكل وبدأ أننا غير قادرين على مواجهة الحياة بشروطها أدرك معظمنا أننا بإدماننا كنا ننتحر ببطء ولكن إدماننا عدو موكل للحياة لدرجة أننا فقدنا القوة على فعل أي شيء حياله انتهى الأمر بكثير منا للسجون وطلب المساعدة من خلال الطب والدين والعلاج النفسي ولكن أي من هذه الطرق لم تكن كافية لمساعدتنا كان مرضنا دائما يدخل إلى الصف مرة أخرى أو يستمر في اتفاقه حتى اليأس فطلبنا المساعدة من بعضنا البعض في زمالة المجمين المجهولين وبعد المجيء إلى زمالة المجمين المجهولين أدركنا بأننا أناس مرضى أننا نعاني من مرض ليس له علاج معروف لكن مع ذلك يمكننا محاصرته عند عند نقطة ما وعند أدن يكون التعافي منه ممكن. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, Basin. Uh, before we continue, I'd like to ask people that have personal conversations going on if you could take it to the back. Uh, people are having a hard time hearing. Next, I would like to call on Pernilla from Sweden, who has been asked to read how it works in Swedish. Hello, I'm an addict named Pernilla, and I'm also a Malihini on this island. I rather I like to be a Kamaina. You have so much pa ilina. And I will read how it works. Hur det fungerar. Om du vill ha vad vi har att erbjuda och är villig att anstränga dig för att få det så är du redo att ta vissa steg. Det här är de principer som gjorde vårt tillfrisknande möjligt. 1. Vi erkände att vi var maktlösa inför vårt beroende. Att våra liv hade blivit ohanterliga. 2. Vi kom till tro på att en kraft starkare än vi själva kunde ge oss vårt förstånd tillbaka. 3. Vi tog ett beslut att lägga vår vilja och våra liv i händerna på Gud som vi uppfattar honom. 4. Vi gjorde en grundlig och orädd moralisk inventering av oss själva. 5. Vi erkände för Gud oss själva och en medmänniska den exakta innebörden av våra fel. Vi var helt och hållet beredda att låta Gud avlägsna alla dessa karaktärsdefekter. Sju. Vi bad honom ödmjukt att avlägsna våra brister. Åtta. Vi gjorde en förteckning över alla personer vi hade skadat och blev villiga att gottgöra dem alla. Nio. Vi gottgjorde dessa människor direkt, var helst möjligt utan att det skulle skada. 
De eller andra. Tio, vi fortsatte vår personliga inventering och erkände genast när vi hade fel. Elva, vi sökte genom bön och meditation att förbättra vår medvetna kontakt med Gud som vi uppfattade honom. Var vi, vi endast bad om insikt om hans vilja med oss och styrkan att utföra den. Tolv, när vi som ett resultat av dessa steg hade haft ett andligt uppvaknande försökte vi att föra detta budskap vidare till de beroende till andra beroende och tillämpa dessa principer i alla våra angelägenheter. Vänd! Det här låter som ett jättearbete och vi kan inte göra allt på en gång. Vi blev inte beroende på en dag så kom ihåg, ta det lugnt. Det finns en sak som mer än något annat kan rasera vårt tillfrisknande och det är en attityd av likhiltighet eller intolerans mot andliga principer. Tre av dessa som är oändliga är ärlighet, öppet sinnelag och villighet. Med detta är vi en bra bit på vår väg. Vi anser att vårt sätt att närma oss beroendesjukdomen är helt realistiskt. För det terapeutiska värdet av att en beroende hjälper en annan är utan motsvarighet. Vi anser att vårt sätt är praktiskt för en beroende kan bäst förstå och hjälpa en annan beroende. Vi tror att ju förr vi möter våra problem i vårt samhälle, i vardagslivet, desto snabbare blir vi acceptabla, ansvarsfulla och produktiva medlemmar i det samhället. Det enda sättet att undvika att återgå till aktivt beroende är att inte ta den där första drogen. Om du är som vi så vet du att en är för mycket och tusen aldrig nog. Vi betonar detta starkt för vi vet att när vi använder droger i vilken form som helst eller ersätter en med en annan frigör vi återigen vårt beroende. Att se alkohol som annorlunda än andra droger har fått ett stort antal beroende att ha återfall. Innan vi kom till NA betraktade många av oss alkohol för sig. Men vi har inte råd att vara oklara på den punkten. Alkohol är en drog. Vi är människor. Vi är människor som har beroende sjukdomen och vi måste avhålla oss från alla droger för att kunna tillfriskna. Mahalo. Thank you, Pernilla. I have been asked to do a short share, personal share. And uh, first, I'd like to thank the support, support committee that, that I have had the pleasure to work with in the past 10 months. Um, it has been a most rewarding and fulfilling service position that I, I have taken in my past uh, 11 years. I'd like to welcome the newcomers. I'd like to welcome the visitors. I'd like to also welcome our local fellowship. Um, I wanted to say a few words about our local fellowship. You know, coming to Waikiki for most of us is a treat. We come here only on special occasions. And, our, you know, to get here, people on the outer islands have to fly, and people on Oahu have to travel as much as 30 or 40 miles to get here. <laughs> you know, I came to NA thinking that I could um, that I would never stop using drugs again. 
I didn't know of any way that any uh, program that would allow me to stop using drugs. I didn't stay in NA my first time. I didn't stay in NA my second time. But when I decided to follow the NA program, my life has progressively been My life has been a miracle in NA. I really thank all of you in this audience today for helping me get to this point in my recovery. And thank you very much. I'm an addict. My name is Charlie. Charlie. Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, first of all, I want to say that I cannot begin to tell you how humbled and honored both Steve and I are by sitting up here in front of all of you people and the hard work and effort that he talked about that we've been a part of. You know, sitting up here and, and looking across this room, and it's like, it's overwhelming. Okay. And, but it's also the giant payoff that we get from all that hard work. But the other part of that is, it wasn't just Steve and I. You know, right now you see Steve and I up here, but let me tell you, there, there was a support, we have a support committee that helped to put this thing on. And real quickly, I'd like to, uh, I just want to introduce those people. So the support committee members, please, if you would, stand up so we can be a, they can identify you. Karen, Claudia, Anthony, Debbie, Bob W., Bob P., Catherine. That, you know, we, it wasn't just Steve and I. All we were able to do was just do a little delegating and, and oversee things. Those are the people that really made the thing happen. We were the people that, and, and the other part of that though is that we couldn't have done this without you guys. And by that I mean this whole fellowship here tonight. All of you volunteers, thank you. I cannot begin to tell you thank you. It, it was just incredible. I know, uh, it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna, I've done a lot of service work over the years, uh, the few years that I've been around, nearly 13 years. And uh, this is going to top it all, and it's going to be looking mighty good on my service resume. <laughs> Not that that means anything anywhere else, but it will here. Um, you know, I'm sitting up here, and as I say, I just feel, I feel so honored. I cannot begin to tell you... I mean, I dress up and look pretty good nowadays. And if you'd have seen me back when, you wouldn't have thought so. I'll tell you this. Um, I walked out of one of the prison facilities back in 1996. And I walked away from what was a 45-year sentence at that time. It was a direct result of my using you guys. I had, you know, they had finally gotten tired of Charlie and... I'm one of those, uh, what you call institutionalized dope fiends, you know. I did a lot of in and outs of prisons and jails and, uh, and treatment centers. And, and to be sitting up here today in front of all you folks and doing something like this, I cannot begin to tell you, it wasn't that long ago when I walked out of the prison facility here in the state of Hawaii and I literally had over the ba over my shoulder a bag of clothes, a pair of shorts, and a tank top and slippers, slaps, and that was all I had, and I, and, and I had the biggest freedom in my life that I can't even begin to tell you. And, and that's where it all started for me, as far as my recovery goes. It took me a lot of years to land here, though, a lot of years. I know I don't look it, but actually in about less than two weeks, I'll be 56 years old. 
How bad? So when I tell you that I used for 33 years, if you figure it out, that's, you know, in other words, it took Knucklehead Charlie about a lot of years to finally realize that this is where I needed to be. You know? And the seed had gotten planted way back in 1972 when I'd landed in a federal treatment program. Only I wasn't ready, you know. Uh, but I spent the next 20-some years trying to figure things out until I finally realized that I'd had enough. I raised my hand and I asked for help. And when I did that, it came in the way of Narcotics Anonymous. Narcotics Anonymous since that day, January 22nd, 1993, has been my home. And I love it. I couldn't think of being anywhere else when it comes to being in a fellowship like this. It's given me a life beyond what I ever expected. And I owe it to Narcotics Anonymous, and I also uh, and I also owe it to you folks. So I want to say thank you, aloha, and I hope that you really have enjoyed yourselves here. And our little old li island chain here has been blessed by all you folks, and you can't imagine what you're going to leave behind after it's all said and done and you've all gone. So thank you beyond all this for that, because that's what's going to matter for us. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Vasily from Greece. That's a good way to start. Kalispera, Melene Vasily, Kimea, Komanis. Good evening, everybody. My name is Vasily, and I'm an addict from Athens, Greece. There's a green grass here. It was a good place. Fall on my knees. It's cement everywhere else. I was looking for a place to fall on my knees. Uh, oh, Jesus. I had so many starts. I tried to look really cool on that bench over there. And I didn't know where to put my hands, my legs, you know, my jacket, my flowers, my, you know. It was all pretty weird. Uh, did I look cool? And this beautiful lady on the left palm from Los Angeles said, Vasily, I see your heart pounding outside of your shirt. <laughs> it did. It was, you know. Well, uh, if I'm, let's start how I got here. I, I got here Wednesday night. Uh, after a 24 hour flight, um, I think 20 hours were up there on the plane, you know, in these seats, it, I, I flew economy. You know what I mean? Next time I'm coming to the States, I'm fly first class. Or business, I'm, yeah, I'm starting saving. Um, so, and these, these seats are really, you know, they're small. And you have to be, you have to be sitting there all the time. And, you know, it, it, it's easy for me to sit. I usually sit, at, you know. When I wake up in the morning, I have to sit down and, you know, pray and stuff. But 20 hours, at a certain point I had to go like this, you know. You remember how it was when we were offing? And I have this prayer, this Greek prayer, and that I, you know, I kept like a mantra, and that was the only thing that could stop me from, you know. It worked. It worked on the plane. Um, 
I guess I'm jet lagged still. It's Saturday. It's morning in Athens. I'll probably be at the, on my way to the morning Sunday morning meeting. But here I am in Hawaii. Wow. 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 Oh, I forgot the aloha thing. Let me get the right fingers out. <laughs> aloha. So, I went to sign up uh, at the speaker's room. And, you know, I hugged the lady and she said, I said, I'm Basilis from Greece. And she says, ah, you're the substitute speaker. <laughs> Substitute? No, 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 you are the best substitute. You are the ultimate. Uh, you know what? I don't feel like a substitute today. But if somebody said that to me a few years back, I would be having problems all these days, you know. Anyway. So, uh, we spend time here. I haven't shared at any minute, so you're going to get all of it in the time I have. Uh, it was pretty overwhelming, as usual, when I'm around you. It's the same thing, whether I'm in, you know, my meeting back home or up here. It's exactly the same thing, whether I'm just with two members in the room or with, you know, I don't know how many you are here. It's just exactly the same for me. I have the same heartbeat, you know. My sponsor told me, how are you going to make it up there? I mean, in, in, back in Athens you go like, I'm cool now. I feel, I feel okay. I feel okay. It's weird. Anyway. Um, so, today, I, I had the day, another, another wonderful day. I surfed for the first time. I'm, I'm 42 years old and I work in fashion, you know. Surf is not my kind of, my cup of tea, so. But, so we went to the surf lessons and, you know, we did the lessons and I would, uh, my friend was there and I said, it's not going to work, but I'm going to go anyway. Surely it's not going to work, you know. I, would, I was hearing instructions. It was exciting. It was new. I, you know, just threw myself in the water puddling. And we went to catch the wave. First one came, I, you know, I, I fell. Couldn't. Second time around, the instructor said, on your knees. On your knees. Just on, stay on your knees and let go. Oh, you, we need the knees here as well. <laughs> What's this with the knees in it? You know what? It worked. It worked. I got the wave. And I was like, Nothing could stop me. I was up there. I was like this. I was oh, doing it right. A hotel was in front of me and I had to jump. You know, like. And I fell like the instructor told me to fall. Like, like a tree. I let go I fell before I hit the hotel. It was wonderful. I screamed my lungs out. Ah. Boy, what a feeling. What a feeling. And there are pictures to prove it. I'm going to bring them back to Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to believe me. They're going to say you, you did a, you know, a Photoshop thing. Or so. But I know I've done it. And I have witnesses. They're going to tell them. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Me up there in the way. Absolutely wonderful. 
Let me tell you how I got to my first meeting in Greece. And how I first heard the Barane in Greece. It was around 1990 when I first heard the Barane. I was going to London and I called a friend up and said, I'm going to London and, you know, I'm going to need something there. Do you have any numbers I can call and stuff? And he said, Vasilis, what can I say? My, all my friends have been to a place that's been called NA. I mean, I don't know. But I can give you a, a number of theirs. What? <laughs> Never mind. I kept the number. I still have this lady's number. I met her a few years afterwards. Can you believe it? I met her. I actually met that woman. Then, I knew, I, I knew a lady that we were using with. I was going to score one day, really sick, in my deshevo, which was pretty much like me at the time. It was a classy wreck thing, you know. Brakes didn't work, but, you know, deshevo, French. You know. Uh, anyway, so I was going to score, and I, I see her going up the road, and I, we stopped. I stopped and she said, Vasilis, I have something good to tell you. And I knew that the good she meant, I didn't need at the time. So I said, yeah, yeah, bye, see you later. Nine months have passed. And after a night that I had burned my kitchen down with my other addiction, French fries. I used to like that. You know, I was nodding out at 3 o'clock in the morning in my couch and french fries, you know, were bait. And fire, you know, fire department and stuff. Anyway, in the morning I ended up in the supermarket of the neighborhood. All burned my hair up like this, you know. I see this lady which, you know, all my life the vision I had of here was with something, you know, here, here, you know, spoons and stuff. And there she was, and she was choosing tomatoes. She was actually choosing tomatoes, see which one was riper, you know. And that was science fiction. Mary choosing, choosing the tomatoes, you know. Like, anyway. And, 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 you know, we bumped into each other. She said, how are you? I said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I just burned my kitchen down, but it's nothing, I'm fine. The usual stuff, you know, I'm, I'm fine, it's, everything is fine. It was the second time that uh, I had burned this kitchen down. French fries, both times with French fries. Even the fire department said, yeah, uh-huh, same guy. Well, anyway, she said, that she said that she's been clean for nine months and it's wonderful and get this number and call this guy if you want to come. And I got the number I never called, you know. You know how it is. Call. Call. Ask for help. Shit, no. Not me. Anyway, and I... Uh, I got sick first time eighty two nineteen eighty two and from that time on from that first uh, Monday morning I woke up and I felt sick I said well I'm gonna quit tomorrow that lasted ten years and tomorrow I'm gonna quit tomorrow and I was always trying to quit so in one of those last attempts I was 15 days on methadone. It was Tuesday night. Uh, I don't know if I slept or anything, but just remember that in, in around 6, 30 in the morning, the TV was on, you know, I was on the couch, morning show. I ended up in the toilet giving birth to something. You know, like, it was actually like giving birth. And I, you know, somebody touched me, that must mean I have no more time. I mean, well, I gave, 
I have to finish the labor here. So I get. I, I gave birth to that something, and I, um, the, with the other hands, was trying to, you know, shoot up here. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. Blood was coming out and stuff, and I, I really shouted, really loud, that, God, make it be the last time. You know what? He heard. I ended up at that first meeting a Sunday afternoon, 25th of October, 1992. I was wearing a blazer, handkerchief here, you know, cufflinks, all buried together. I had to go three store, uh, you know, it was on the third floor. I almost died getting up there. I ended up in this room with a group of people. There were eight or ten at the time, and there were four meetings a week. I shared, of course. I told you what to do. I said, you know, everybody shared, and I shared. I said, you should love yourself, and, you know, give yourself a blah, blah, And by the end, I, I ended up crying at the woman's hug. I didn't like what she was wearing, but, you know. And she said, what do I have to do now? She said, just come back tomorrow. That's all? That's all. I went home. They gave me the papers. I read the papers. And I cried. I cried. I held them like this. And I slept for the first time. Two hours. Next day I'm going. That alcohol thing I didn't get. But Wednesday, 28th of October, 92, I stayed clean. And I'm clean since then. I'm going. Second call. I have to leave you guys. Love you. We're doing great in Greece. And one last thing, if you want to see how the Greeks are doing it, come to our convention in a month. At this time, I'd like to introduce Natalia from Russia. I'm from Russia. I'm an addict. Um, and right now, I don't feel okay, so I need to say something before I start to speak. Um, I was very nervous today, and I've been nervous since I came here, because I knew I would be sharing on Saturday. And, but an hour ago, uh, I was terribly nervous, almost paralyzed by fear, and I, I needed to smoke, and I couldn't get out into the street, just because it was overcrowded, you know, and... People, uh, a man from the host committee was so kind to me to let me smoke inside. <laughs> so if I, if I disappointed anyone who saw me doing a kind of illegal thing, so I apologize for that, but I was doing that legally. And you know, I'm not standing here because I'm a saint. I'm here because I'm an addict. I was asked to share um, a bit of my personal story and a bit of a story of Pene uh, in my country. So I'll try to do this. I'll try to make a, fix, uh, a mix, mix sorry, of these two stories. Um, but it's a long story. I don't know how to make it short. You know, I'm, I'm not a professional speaker, and I don't want to be interrupted in the middle of my speech. <laughs> So, um, well, I was born in the year 1976, and I began to use, but I was born an addict. Uh, as long as I remember myself, I always was an addict. 
But I, my active addiction began in the year 1988 when I was 12. And um, two years later, I began to use systematically, I mean, every day, several times a day. And it was in the year 1990. And that year, the first NA meeting was opened in Russia. And that happened to be in my home city in St. Petersburg. But at that time, I didn't know about NA. And I, if, even if I knew, I, I think I could not... Uh, get this message at that time because I was so closed in my mind. I was like imprisoned in my own thoughts, in my in my own world. And I was carrying this prison with me everywhere and but I was pretty comfortable with it because drugs were not my problem at that time. They were a solution to my problems. Um, um well and there were no PI service or any other service at that time. There were only two women sitting in front of each other and waiting for a newcomer. That's how NA started in Russia. Um, and a year after, a newcomer came, and yesterday you saw him on the screen in the presentation of faces of NA around the world. Uh, an old guy with a beard, his name is Victor, he's still in NA, he comes to meetings, he's still doing service. He's 15 years clean. And one of those women who started NA in Russia, she now lives in, in state in Illinois. Her name is Lena. I don't know why she's not here, but I know she's still active in NA and she does service for her new region. Um, well, um, to make it short. <laughs> well, I was, I was using, um, for, well, it took me 10 years to found NA actually. And um, by the year, like, ni 1995, I, I think I, I completely lost a so-called human look, you know. And my mother, a year earlier, my mother moved to Moscow. She couldn't stand this. She, she refused um, to see how I was losing human look. Uh, and I, I didn't have contact with my family at all. My, my aunt tried to help me as she understood this. She tried to control me, but... I hated her. I was violent to her. I, I, I didn't want to get any help from her. And I didn't have contact with my father. He was an alcoholic. And I was like him. We were the same. You know, I, I saw myself in him and I, I hated him too. So um, there was a period when I was in the street. You know, I, I didn't have a place to live. And I met my husband. So we um, began to live together. We were using together. And... It was in the year, I think, 1996 or, or 97, I don't remember, when I heard about NA for the first time. Because my husband's mother, she was a member of an organization called uh, Mothers Against Drugs. And she told me that, I don't remember whether she used the name of Narcotics Anonymous, but she said, like, you know, there are people, they used to be drug addicts, but they are not anymore. And they, and they meet... Uh, in a certain place every day they have readings in the meetings and they drink tea after the meetings together and they stay clean. I didn't believe her. I didn't believe her and that, that sounded strange to me. Uh, at that time, uh, at that time we didn't have any treatment center, any places where addicts get, can get clean and stay clean. Um, the only two places I knew were uh, a mental hospital where drug addicts were treated like shit, and a prison. I've never been in prison. My husband was, and she w uh, he was imprisoned again in 1997, and she was sentenced for three years, and his mother kicked me out of the apartment, so I was in the street again. And I was desperate. At that time, I, I was desperate. And then a miracle happened, because my father uh, showed up in my life, and I, I, I couldn't, you know, recognize my father in that man, you know. Uh, it was my father, yeah, I saw him, but he was, you know, completely different person, different personality. <sighs> and he told me that he is sober for one year in Alcoholics Anonymous, and he told me about the program, 12 Steps program. Uh, and he said, um, you need to go to these meetings before it is too late. Because you are dying. You are dying soon. And I don't want you to die because you are my only child and I wasn't a good father for you. So these things. But he didn't invite me to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. He said, 
There is another fellowship, the same 12 steps, but only for people like you. You need to go to that meeting. Um, and, you know, I believed him. I believed him, and I, and I went to that meeting. And at that time, uh, there were, I think, not more than 20 people, and newcomers were very, how to say in English, rare. I mean, like, one newcomer in, in six months. <laughs> So uh, people were very kind to me, but I couldn't get clean. Uh, and you know, I was I was a strict drug addict. I didn't have clothing for winter, and um, I was withdrawing most of the time because I didn't have enough dope. I didn't have enough money to get dope. And anyway, I, I thought that I'm much more smarter than they they were. You know, I'm, I'm intelligent, and they, they believe in high power. Probably because they don't know that there is no higher power. Um, uh, so I, I needed a reason for higher power. Because I knew I was powerless. I knew that was evident for me. But powerlessness meant to me that I can't stop using. If I'm powerless, that I can't stop. And there were no higher power for me. Um, so I couldn't get clean. And I, But I came to, to those meetings because I felt like, you know, I felt like at home there among those people, but as they were so kind to me, I, I could not continue deceiving them because I felt like I'm deceiving them because I, I, I was not clean, you know, and I stopped coming and it took me a year to come back. And th that year was the worst year in, in all my using because uh, I knew there were people who can't do this, you know, who can't stay clean and I couldn't. So I was a loser. There was nothing left from that smart person you know, who I thought I was. Um, so um, a year later, I decided to come back. But before that, I came to my father and asked him to let me stay with him for a couple of weeks or for a month just to get through the physical pain because I've never been to any detox or treatment center. I came from the street. Um, so he let me stay with him, and I came to an A meeting. And I saw, like... 70 people or 80 people at that time because, you know, the fellowship began to grow at that year when I was using, you know, knowing about NA. Um, and I saw people and they, they, they looked good, you know, uh, and at the first minute I, I thought, well, is this the right place for me? But then uh, I heard them sharing in a meeting and after a meeting, um, I heard them talking about, you know, lifestyle, I mean, about nice things they found in a second-hand store, and I could understand that. I understood nice things in a second-hand store, but the only difference between me and them was that they were buying those things, and I was stealing them. So I, I realized that they are just like me, uh, and I can change my life like they did. And the only thing I have to do is to apply spiritual principles in my life like they do. Um, and that was what I needed most, you know, spiritual principles. Because I, before that, I didn't have any principles. I didn't have any. Because it seems that everybody else had some principles. Like my husband had principles, like prisoners' ha pr uh, principles. And other people had gangsters' principles. Prostitutes in the street had their own principles. I didn't have any principles. No, I, I was a loser, you know. And, and you know... The other reason why I made this decision to get clean and to come to those meetings was that I wanted to die clean. I, I know it, sound, it sounds strange, and sometimes people don't believe that, but it really was like that. I, I wanted to die clean because I knew I, I would die, you know, and, but I didn't want to die while using because uh, I didn't believe, at that time, I didn't believe in higher power, but I, I knew that I didn't want to go to hell, you know. Like, uh, and I, I, did, I didn't want just to die when I'm not withdrawing. I, I, I wanted to become a better person before I die. <laughs> um, um, and I really, I really wanted to become a person who I could respect because I disrespected myself totally, and I wanted to become a person who I could respect. So. 
um, I was willing to go to any lands to stay clean. Um, and I found a sponsor after 10, year, uh, 10 days uh, in the fellowship. I found a sponsor. Um, I began to do service, you know. Uh, I, I wanted to belong to this fellowship. It was really important to me. Um, and I, I remember when I was uh, like four days clean, I was sitting in a meeting and I was suffering from pain and I was so cold and someone offered me a cup of hot tea and I was sitting in a meeting holding this cup in my hands, warming my hands. And after the meeting I went to the kitchen and washed all the cups and no one, I, I, I think no one knew about that. That was classical, you know, anonymous service, but at that time I did it for myself because at that time I thought, I'm already becoming a better person. <laughs> I, I wanted to, it, right now, you know, I'm four days clean and I'm already becoming a better person. <laughs> Um, okay, so, well, it's a long story, actually. So, so um, then, just, I'll try to make it short. Then, when I was almost two years clean, I relapsed. I was involved in service, I went to meetings, um, I did everything. But, you know, there was a lack in program. It's evident, because when my husband was released um, from, from the prison, I thought I could help him, and we uh, began to live together again. But I couldn't help him, actually, and uh, after three months, I relapsed. But that's another story. I'm not going to tell it. Just a part of this story is that after I relapsed, I, I was so desperate. I was back to hell, you know, and I lost that wonderful life that I had before. And, and I, I, was, I was desperate. And I become, become so uh, obsessive for using drugs. I, I used more and more and more just to avoid any feelings, but I couldn't. And I ended up in a situation when I lost all the feelings. And when my feelings were uh, back to me, I realized that I couldn't move. Um, I didn't feel my legs at all. So I was paralyzed and physically disabled for a couple of months. And my help, friends in the NA helped me a lot at that time. And when I was back to meetings, uh, well, the fellowship began to grow, I think, in the, in the year 1999, because I was involved in literature service and translation service at that time, and in the year 1999, we got our basic text, you know. And since then, the fellowship began to grow really fast, you know. So when I was back to meetings, um, I saw people, you know, in, in my area convention, and saw people standing for, like, two years, and I would never seen them before. But I knew they were coming to meetings, just to another meeting. Um, so since then, since the year 2000, I'm, I'm, I'm clean, you know. Um, and I still work steps. Um, I have my second sponsor. Unfortunately, my first sponsor died two years ago from cancer. I have my second sponsor. I, I work steps, and I'm still in service. And, you know, um, just a few words about service, because this is really an important part of my recovery. Uh, I, was, I was involved in organizing of the first ERECA meeting in St. Petersburg and then of the regional committee and I used to be secretary of the regional committee. I did a lot of paperwork which is important but what I like most about service is a real thing. I mean fellowship development. It's a real action and, I, and I've done four fellowship development trips to different places in my region. And every time, it's, it's amazing, and, and the results are amazing. Because, you know, this year, in February, uh, I went to Ufa. It's a city in the east part of Russia, an Asian part over the Ural Mountains. And it was a long trip, um, like 52 hours on the train. And it was February, it was so cold, but the fellowship was so warm there. And, you know, we came there, I and two other people from uh, regional committee members, one from St. Petersburg, another one from the eastern part of Russia. And we came there, and other people from neighboring towns came there for the workshop. We hold two days workshop. And I couldn't believe my eyes. People were working in small groups, and they were really interested in what they were doing. I couldn't believe they all were at it. You know? You know, it's, and they asked me questions. You know, what? I didn't have all the answers, and I was thinking about the answers myself. And I was listening to other people sharing their experience, and I got so much from my personal recovery, you know, and I, and I made new friends, and I hope I make new friends here. So this is really one fellowship and many friends.
Well, I just want to say um, all of you are very welcome to Russia to make new friends there. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Harui from Japan. My name is Harue. I'm an addict. Harue is a drug addict. Today, I'm very happy to be here. I'm filled with a lot of happiness and pleasure today. Thank you. This is a very,、uh, a place where I have a lot of memories here in Hawaii.、Um, and one of the memories is that I was able to be the speaker of the World Convention in Hawaii. で私たち日本の NA とハワイの NA は、えー、本当に、えー、ずっと交流し続けて私たちにとって、えー、回復というのは一番初めに見た実はハワイの仲間たちの回復の姿が NA での回復の姿でした。The, uh, I asked her to repeat it again. I couldn't hear it. I forget. I forget. <laughs> She forgot. <laughs> no, I forget. I forget. えー、ベーシックテキストを持ってきてくれて、えー、それからミーティング、あの、えー、日本の先行く仲間たちに教えてくれて始まったのが日本の NA だったんです。で、えー、本当に、And that was 22 years ago. My clean, and I have been clean for 21 years now. Yes. <laughs> 22 years ago, I was in the absolute darkness. その頃日本では女性で薬物依存症という病気になるということを誰も知らなかったから。Then, um, drug, drug 依存症という言葉もありませんでした。依存症という言葉もなかった。Even the word drug addicted,、uh, drug dependent wasn't even there. あるのは、えー、地面で寝ているホームレスのアルコール依存症のおじさんたちだけでした。The only thing that people knew was those old men who was alcoholic who was like uh, uh, lying down on the street. 私は26歳の女性で I was 26 years old female. なんで毎日こんなに薬が止まらないのか。I had no idea why I, I wasn't able to stop using drugs. I had no idea why all these bad things kept、uh, happening to me. I had no idea why I had to think about how to get another drug every single day. I had no idea why I had so many lovers.
本当に。Absolutely not. 自分に何が起きているのかわかりませんでした。I had no、idea. 本当に宇宙の中に自分が一人でいるような感じ。I felt like、I was the only one person in the whole entire universe. 誰にもその話はできませんでした。I couldn't really share this story with anybody else. おそらく最後の3年間は誰とも親しく口を聞いたことはなかった。Like、本当の孤独の中にいました。It was an absolute solitude. 今でもそのことを思い出すと胸がいっぱいになる。Even now, when I think about what happened to me back then, it really felt It makes me feel really、sad. そして26の時に初めて、And when I was 26 years old, あなたは依存症だと、中毒だと言われましたが、中毒、うん、言われた。And when I was 26, I was diagnosed with, the,、um, with this uh, uh, drug dependency. でもそれを認めることはできなかった。But I could not stop it. なぜなら、私の家族の中で、私がアルコール依存症、あるいは薬物依存症であるということは、家族の恥になるから。Because me being drug dependent is not just the shame of my own, but the entire family. それなら死んだ方がマシだと。And I didn't want to, you know, put the, the stigma on my family. I'd rather die. 私が死ねばいいんだと思っていました。If I could die, then my family doesn't have to suffer from it. 本当に家族に申し訳なかった。For my, for my うん、そして、えー、NA のプログラムと出会ったときに、えー、依存症は回復するということを教えられました。Finally, uh, program, I was learned, I, I was the, uh, でもそんなことは信じられなかった。まるでそれは地獄の底に落ちていくような気持ちだった。Time, like、down down down すべての人を裏切って。す、uh, べての人を裏切って地獄の底に落ちていくような気持ちだった。Hell, um, the, the でもそこに7人の NA メンバーがいたんです。But when I got to the program, there were seven NA members there. 地獄の底に人で、地獄の底で人にあった。And the, the very bottom of the hell, there are all these seven people waiting for me. <laughs> 本当に、えー、仲間たちはクレイジーで。My fellowship, fellow people there are all crazy. All these people have been totally given up by professional providers, physicians, and doctors. Nobody believed that they were able to stop. Um, back then there was a group of alcoholics、uh, in Japan. Those people, even these, these people didn't like these people here in the group. <laughs> And many of them were a lot of troublemakers. A lot of newcomers were really bad ones. Yakuza de, Yakuza de, Naokatsu, Seishin Bio in the 17 Nen Haitiri Yona Nakamatashi Bakari de. Some people like Yakuza, you know, the Japanese gangsters, and,、uh, who were in the、uh, mental institute. I even felt ashamed walking down the street with them. Demo, Ima Omoi Kaesto, 本当に、そういう仲間たちが私を助けてくれてたんだっていうことがよくかった。But when I look back, I realize that these bad guys were the o n e
NA は、やめた人の集まりじゃなくて、NA program is not the program that,、uh, for the people who already stopped. やめたいと願望を持つ人たちの集まりです。It's the program for those people who want to stop. だから何度でも、何度でも失敗を繰り返してもいい。So if you make mistakes in the program, you make it over and over again. ハイアパーがあなたのことを愛してるから。Because your higher power never stops loving you. There are a lot of funny things that happened in the past when I look back. When I had my first baby, when I first time saw him, he would come to me. All these people who came to see my baby in the first time、uh, in the hospital, Well, all of them were from my NA groups. Those members from NA group came to see my baby even before my husband did. Many, many times. Those NA members came to the places where I needed them even before my husband did. <laughs> of course, all these people who are ahead of me, who's been, you know, who stopped using for a long time, those people helped me. Those people who kept slipping. Other ones also helping me. They kept helping me. Uh, when I started to come to the program, there are very few women ahead of me in the program. And so I had to look for those women in Hawaii to teach me how to live, how to stop using, and how to live the program. And that's why I have so many friends in Hawaii that I've known them for so long. And my sponsor even,、uh, she lives in Los Angeles. So I am always surrounded by all these people. The fellows close by in Japan, as well as all these people and friends, my sponsors, out,、uh, far away from Japan. And all these people in a different situation, different environment, they always were ready to accept me the way I am. When the Japanese NA community used to be really, really small, even though it was so small, the NA World Service really paid attention to what we really needed to get. They always thought about us. They helped us translate a lot of literatures. And for that, I'm really, really grateful and thankful. Thank you so much. And now, 
ハワイの仲間たちが私たちにメッセージを届けてくれたように、Just like Hawaiian members carry the message to us. アジアの、アジアの他の仲間たちにもメッセージを伝えたいと思っています。I love to carry the same message to the rest of the Asian country, the people in Asia. As Natalia was talking about, the really far, farthest way that you can reach We don't, we, we don't want to forget all these places that the message is really hard to reach. Women in Islam countries, don't forget those people. Because women,、uh, Because they are women, they,、um, their disease is not really on the front. And a lot of the, the time, the, the relationship,、um, because they are women,、mm-hmm. they don't have,、uh, they cannot really connect it to other people.、Mm-hmm. この NA のね、素晴らしい女性のコミュニティがあるんだってことをみんなに知ってほしい。まだ苦しんでる仲間に。So, I would like to let all these people who are still suffering know that、uh, there's a wonderful community of NA women. Yeah. <laughs> それで一つ嬉しいことがあります、えー。来月からやっと日本の女性の刑務所に個人的なメッセージを運ぶことができました。回復者が刑務所の中で初めあの女性の刑務所の中で話すというのは初めてです。This is going to be the first time ever in Japan that they will be able to carry the message to prison system to Japanese women for the first time from next month on. And this is the dream that I've been dreaming for the last 22 years. That was the dream for us to be able to carry the message to these people in the prison, those women in the prison. That makes me really happy. ね、And I believe it's all, you know, this is, this is happening right now because of the, all the support and love from everybody in all over the world. When you're drug addicted, drug dependent, you're not alone. Thank you, Higher Power. Thank you, higher power. At this time, at this time, I'd like to introduce Luigi from Italy. Buonasera a tutti, mi chiamo Luigi e sono un tossicodipendente. Hi, my name is Luigi, I'm an addict from Italy. Thank you. I want to thank the organization for this light because for this light I can't see you and trust me it's really better. We are so many. In Italy, in、uh, NA, we are、uh, just 
and for one uh, uh, regional meeting we are two or three hundred members and so to share here it's uh, like a miracle and I want to thank you and um, I'm very I'm sorry because my English is really bad <laughs> But I'm Italian. For the Italian person to learn to speak in English, it's like cook or take a shower without seeing. Almost impossible. <laughs> but I'm here. And uh, without a translator. And yesterday I wrote some notes. And with my heart and with this, I will do my, my best. <clears throat> Um, if you don't understand me, it's not my fault. Because two years ago, the World Service Office has invited here for the World Conference my ex-wife, my former wife, <laughs> for a chair. She went to San Diego, and uh, when she came back, she told me about a lot of beautiful emotion, cry, a smile. And so when I received my Mike's call from World Service Office for a so important share, um, I could uh, refuse, <laughs> in spite of my difficulty with the English language. And so if you don't understand me, the fault is not mine of my ex-wife. I live in Rome, but I in Rome, but I was born in Naples. Naples is a big, a wonderful city in the south of Italy. And um, with a in in Naples, uh, you can grow with a mind very open, open and free. Many young artists, many, uh, many young people have the possibility to grow their passion in Naples. But uh, my town is also very dangerous. It's the capital of drug. And uh, it's too easy to find drugs in Italy. <laughs> any kind of drugs, that it doesn't look possible, uh, it's illegal. And so when I was 13, about 13 years old, 13, with some friends, I started to drink and to use drugs, light drugs. Uh, we listen music and uh, kiss for the first time some girls. <laughs> and uh, for the first time, you know, and feeling bigger <laughs> and stronger thanks, thanks to drugs help. Yeah. Uh, when the first time I tried heroin, I cried for the emotion. Uh, I finally found something able to make me feel good for the first time I could make sex for hours <laughs> with Aaron I looked more nice and my uh, insecurities yeah <laughs> was off <laughs> and I desired to share this strong emotion with all the person. <laughs> I love it. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to encourage the people to drag. <laughs> but uh, this um, amusement was short. 
because day after day the effect uh, of that magic was shorter. I started mm, not to be so funny, no sex anymore. <laughs> And no money. Money was insufficient. <laughs> and my financial claims made my parents uh, suspicious. They thought I was a gambler. <laughs> I said, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and when my family money became insufficient, I started to ask for it to my girlfriend to take money, more than one. <laughs> I started to, um, it was a real business for me, <laughs> the love, not really, <laughs> it's, not, it's not romantic. I made my choice not because they are beauty or, or good, good in nature but because uh, for, for the money. And I had only to say some lies about my business, job, that were bad, to look sad, and then make a love in passionate way, speaking love words. It's typical Italian. And it was enough to have them feel to help me. But also this experience uh, finished soon because uh, it was always more difficult to hide the heroin, my, my, my the use of heroin. I began to sell drugs first to my friend and in the street. And I started to commit serious crimes. I was arrested. And for the first time after getting over, I, you said, cool turkey. Yeah? Abstinence. Uh, I found a lot of time to think about myself. Without drugs, without using drugs. But they arrested me, but not, they don't, didn't stop my disease. And I, uh, continued my use. I had lost everything, and I lost also contact with my, uh, parents for a lot of years. And I spent the more time sleeping on people, coach, <laughs> coach. I know this word today, coach. <laughs> then the night in my house. My house was really dirty, without windows, and uh, my fridge was stinky. <laughs> and uh, I started to think another life, a better life. I, want to, I wanted to quiet. And there was five times internet in a, a psychiatric institution. And, um, and, um, one night, one morning, when I woke up, I found my girlfriend in my bed. She was dying for overdose and uh, it was terrible I, I didn't understand why her and not me and um, in those days we weighed only uh, 45 kilos uh, about 20 uh, le lesser than now 
and I tried once again to find help in a public institution in Italy, structure, yeah. And someone there spoke about me of NA. And, uh, yeah. At the first meeting, I came late. <laughs> and the people were already gone. <laughs> But the day after, uh, I found the room. I didn't believe that they really would be able to help me. No medical, no... I don't know. But I had tried already so many ways that uh, one more will not change my life. I was of all surprised that they don't control me in the room. Also because I took me an half an hour for hide the drugs in myself. No doctor or test of a mission. And the moderator seemed to be more drugged than me. Every, everybody said, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. And they seemed to be very happy. It was so strange for me. And uh, in the end of my first meeting, uh, all the people put themselves almost in the a line, a wrong, to hug me. And they thought <laughs> they want to control me now. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. They just um, encourage me. It was so strange. I continued to go in these strange meetings every day. Even if I couldn't stay clean without dragging myself. But it was the first time that uh, nobody will tell me what to you, what to do. And I feel myself free. It was my choice. And, um, I, remember, I can remember my first clean day like a miracle. It was in September the 10th, the 1997. <laughs> Everything was running normal around me, but I will see it in another way, with other eyes. I had two meetings a day, every day, dedicating myself to service and to the work of the steps. My complete sur surrender and the fact to be aware uh, that of my disease made so that I felt finally free. I didn't have no dogs no more. I could not use drugs anymore. And um, after some years, <laughs> another miracle. <laughs> I go out with a girl, she was about 13 years of clean time, in a May. I finally, I finally had things I always wanted to have, and we got married. And after a while, 
uh, a miracle because uh, I thought I would die with a needle in my arm, but uh, I was given a new life because my wife was expecting a baby. And today I have two children. Camilla, she is six. Antonio is four. I'm clean and I'm my good father. I have a beautiful house and a good job, a good art. I continue to serve in NA and today I'm the Italian delegate in the world. And uh, I feel really, really lucky. And uh, One month ago, this is very important for me, my first sponsor died. He had 18 year, years of clean time. His name was Walter. It was one of my uh, best friends. And he would have been very proud to see me here today. I want to dedicate this moment to him. I remember him and all the friends that are not here no more, that die clean or they try to be clean. Thank you very much. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Horacio from Argentina. My name is Horacio, and I am Adik. Me lo tuve que anotar. Eh, bueno, antes que nada, yo quiero agradecer. Before anything else, I want to thank you. Quiero agradecer, en principio, a mi poder superior. I want to thank my higher power. Al servicio. The service that I do. A los compañeros que me trajeron aquí. The members who brought me here. Y a una persona muy especial que. And a, and a very special person. Es un compañero que muchos conocen, que Latinoamérica está muy agradecida. And it's a member who many members in Latin America know, and, and who, and all these members are very grateful to him. Que es el compañero George Hollahan. Is uh, our fellow member George Hollahan. Y que hoy siguió la continuidad estos servicios mundiales. Por eso Latinoamérica está funcionando. That's why uh, I want to mention this because Latin America owes a lot to him. Para que tengan una idea de donde yo vengo, so you have an idea where I come from. mi avión demoró 24 horas para llegar. Took me 24 hours to fly over here. En donde yo estoy, where I am, se termina el mundo. That's where the, the world ends. Y en ese estado donde se termina el mundo, hay un grupo de NA. And in that part of the world, there's an NA group. Mi historia es como mucha la de ustedes. Mi historia es muy parecida de todos los que están. My story is very similar to all of you. Estuve detenido. I was in prison. No pude parar de consumir. I couldn't stop using. Mi familia no me pudo hacer parar de consumir. My family couldn't help me to stop using. 
incluido mis hijos, Including my children. pero Narcóticos Anónimos sí. But Narcotics Anonymous was able to do that for me. Tengo cinco hijos. I have five children. Tengo una hija que no está porque en presente, pero está porque ha fallecido. Y no he tenido que consumir. And I have a daughter that is not here with us, but I didn't have to use because of that. Eso se lo debo a ustedes. And that I owe it to you. Tengo un hijo que, por la gracia de Dios, está en el programa. I have a son who, by the grace of God, is in the program also. Y lo llamé y le conté de esto y está y estoy feliz porque él está orgulloso de mí. And I called him on the phone the other day and I told him about what I was experiencing here and he said he was very proud of me. Hablé con mi padrino. I talked to my sponsor. Le conté lo que era esto. I told him what this was like. Le digo, parece un festival de rock. This is like a rock festival, I said to him. Estas pantallas que se ven acá, All these en, screens that you see on both sides of the stage, en mi país llegaron hace poco. They arrived to my country just a little time, a short él, time ago. Y él no podía creer que aquí estaban. And he couldn't believe that we had this here in this convention. Yo estoy muy agradecido al servicio. I'm very grateful to, to service. En realidad, yo nunca hubiera pensado que iba a poder estar aquí en el paraíso. I never thought that I'd be able to be here in this paradise. Y esto nunca lo voy a poder olvidar. And I'll never be able to forget this. En realidad fue un regalo de mi poder superior. This was a gift from a higher power. De los servicios. In service. Cuando me llamaron para comunicarme esto, yo pensé, están todos locos. When they called me to ask me to speak here, I thought everyone was crazy. Y me tocó viajar el día de mi cumpleaños. And, and I flew here the day of my birthday. El 30 de agosto. The 30th of August. Y de tiempo, mi tiempo limpio es 7 de diciembre. Llegué en el año 1992. Yes, my claim time is December 7th, 1992. Para mí, la parte más importante que he tenido dentro del programa fue cuando transité el tercer paso. Was when I did my third step. Cuando dejé que mi poder superior guiara mi vida. A partir de ahí, los milagros sucedieron. From that point on, the miracles happened. Y realmente que yo pueda estar aquí es un milagro. And then really, for me to be able to be here, it's a, a real miracle. Yo nunca había podido salir de mi país. I, I was never able to leave my country. Esta es la tercera vez que estoy en Estados Unidos. This is the third time that I've been able to be here in the United States. Aprendí a querer este país. I, I learned to love this country. Y aprendí a amar a todo Narcóticos Anónimos. And I learned to love Narcotics Anonymous as a whole. A través de trabajar los pasos. To work in the steps. Le puedo decir a un hombre que lo quiero. I can tell a man that I love him. Para mí eso antes no existía. For me that didn't exist before. A una mujer que la quiero. I could say that to a woman also. Decir eso para mí era solamente pensar en otras cosas. For me to say that had other ulterior motives. Tuve que reparar. I had to repair. Básicamente con mis hijos. All the things that I had done to my children. Yo tomaba a mi hijo el más pequeño. I took my little, my youngest son. Lo llevaba conmigo a los bares. I took him with me. Lo dejaba en la puerta del baño. I would leave him in the, at the door by the bathroom. 
Y yo entraba a ese baño y me inyectaba. Now we're going to the bathroom and, and shoot up. Hoy gracias a este bendito programa lo pude reparar. Thanks to this program today I've been able to repair all those things. Nunca me puedo olvidar cuando entré a mi primera reunión de narcóticos anónimos. No podía pasar la puerta. I was really afraid of crossing that door. Lloraba, lloraba, lloraba. No podía decir mi nombre. I couldn't even say my name. Los compañeros se asustaron. And all my, the fellow members were afraid. Mi padrino siempre me lo recuerda. My sponsor always reminds me of this. Yo hoy estoy hablando ante miles de personas. Yo no lo puedo creer. And today I'm speaking in front of thousands of members and I can't believe this. Me pasaron, he conocido en recuperación in recovery I have met muchos amigos, many friends. muchos están acá, A lot of you are here today. una compañera que está acá, Giovanna, fellow member that is here, Giovanna. estábamos en Hollywood, We were in Hollywood y se da vuelta y me dice, Horacio, ¿a dónde nos llevaron las drogas? A Hollywood. And she said, Horacio, where did the drugs take us to? Hollywood. Hoy me trajeron a Miami, a Hollywood, a... A Hawaii. Today they brought me here to Hawaii. Luego transitando mis pasos vi quién soy. And then uh, by working the steps I realized who I was. Hoy me puedo aceptar. Today I accept myself. Cuando llegué no sabía quién era. When I arrived here I didn't know who I was. Qué me gustaba. What I liked. Hoy sé que me gusta, quién me gusta, qué me gusta. Like like. Tuve una esposa durante 20 años. I was I had, I had a wife for 20 years. Hoy tengo de mujer, de pareja una compañera. Today my mate is another fellow member from the fellowship. Ambos estamos limpios. We're both clean. Vivimos juntos. We live together. La quiero. And I love her. Estoy muy feliz. And I'm very happy. Sigo agradecido eternamente a mi poder superior. I will always be eternally grateful to my higher power. La parte más importante, el servicio. And the most important part is service. En Argentina nos costaba mucho entrar a las instituciones penitenciarias. We had a real difficult time entering institutions in Argentina. Hoy hay credibilidad en narcóticos anónimos. In Argentina now they, they believe in us, there's credibility. Nos escucha el gobierno. The government listens to us. Tuvimos el honor de cuando fueron los servicios mundiales, los recibieron del gobierno, autoridades. And we had the honor to have uh, the government receive the world services there. Y no lo podíamos creer. And we couldn't believe this. Que los profesionales, que el gobierno nos escuchaba. That the professionals and the officials of the government were listening to us. Hoy gracias a esto tenemos that, prestar servicio en cárceles, en cárceles de mujeres. We're doing services in jails and women's jails. En neuropsiquiátricos. In treatment centers and psychiatric centers. Y eso nos hace feliz. And that makes us very happy. El más importante es el recién llegado. The most important part is the newcomer. Para eso hago servicio. That's why I do service. Nunca me voy a olvidar de dónde vengo. I'll never forget where I come from. Y si mi vida en otra época fue prostitución, drogadicción. And if my life in a past life was drug, drug addiction. Hoy no lo es. Hoy es felicidad. Hoy es alegría. Today is happiness and joy. Hoy es agradecimiento. Today it's gratitude. Y mucha felicidad. And lots of happiness. Y siguiendo los pasos and following the steps pude ser feliz soy feliz I achieved this I'm happy puedo tener problemas como tenemos todos I have problems like everybody else does pero tengo la alegría de tener un programa but I'm happy to have the program yo siempre hago hincapié en el servicio I always emphasize on service mis reuniones cuando llego Trato de compartir, pero le quiero enseñar a los compañeros, mostrar mejor que enseñar. 
When I go to my meetings, uh, I share sometimes, but I like to show them what I do instead of talking what I do. La mejor manera es hacerlo. And the best way of doing this is to do it. Y no me quiero olvidar de mi frase preferida en Narcóticos Anónimos. Comprendo su situación porque la hemos atravesado. I understand your situation because I have gone through that. Y nada más y muchas gracias. Thank you very much. And last but not least, I'd like to introduce our last speaker, Pam from the U.S. of A. My name is Pam and I'm an addict. I'm clean tonight by God's grace and the 12 principles of Narcotics Anonymous. The lady just asked me in the bathroom, she said, are you nervous? I said, she said, you don't look nervous. I said, that's the outside. You just can't see my inside. Yes, I am nervous. I've been nervous since Tuesday. A lot of anxiety, but it's by God's grace that I'm here tonight. Unmerited gift. God gave me a gift of recovery. And it has not been based on anything that I've done. I have a friend, uh, in L.A., he says, gift, God is forever there, and I believe that. I'm so glad to be here tonight. And if anybody here tonight, tonight thinks this is easy, it's not easy. And it takes a lot of, I heard Mark said Wednesday night, it takes a whole lot of humility to be up here on this stage. Just to be here in front of all you guys takes a whole lot of humility. First of all, I want to thank uh, I want to thank my sponsor uh, for loving me and understanding me and opening her life up to me. Thank you, B. And I want to thank my grand sponsor, Becky, because I just think you're the bomb. And I want to thank. Uh, And then I want to thank my area, the greater Los Angeles area of Narcotics Anonymous. I want to thank everybody that showed up here from my area. Whether you came to support me or you just came to vacation, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I don't have a whole lot of time. It's not going to take me a whole lot of time to um, say what I need to say. It's funny, the thing tonight is... One fellowship, many friends. And I got many friends here tonight. I want to thank Joe Steve, too, for being my friend. And I want to thank Lee. I want to thank you, two gentlemen. It's many more, and I can't remember. I always hear people say, you know, you can't, if you try to remember everybody, you know, somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. I love everybody, but I want to thank those two gentlemen from the bottom of my heart, because they have truly been my friends no matter what. I want to thank you guys for that. And I want to welcome to newcomers to Narcotics Anonymous and tell you that you're the most important person here tonight. Welcome. And everybody's been telling me, Pam, don't worry, you're going to do fine, you're going to do fine, you're going to do fine. And I prayed tonight with Weddle and Pam, and then I prayed with Martha, and I, then I went in the bathroom and prayed and asked God the God in me, just to reach one of you guys out here tonight. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell my story in the, in the time that I have allowed tonight. I'm an addict. I said I'm an addict. My clean day is September 24th of 1984. When I go back home, I'll be celebrating 21 years clean. I originally got to Narcotics Anonymous in 1981, and I was a mess when I got here. I can sum it up. I was a mess when I got here. Very confused. Running. I had been running for a long time. I had been running from me. 
all my life. Thank God I ran right in here to Narcotics Anonymous. I had been running from some of you guys as kids growing up, and then I found out some of you guys were in here. But I've been running, and I came here, and I was a mess. I was confused. I was very angry, and I thought I was angry at all you guys, and I found out that I was angry at me. I was angry for all the choices that I had made, some of the decisions that I had made, some of the places that I had been, and I was angry. And I came in here, and I didn't get better right off. I stayed at a dis-ease with myself for a very long time. You know, it's funny. I want to say this. A lot of people have been in my head all weekend. And what I mean in my head, because different people have different opinions on what should be shared from here and what I should and should not say. And um, and it's just a lot of voices have been going on. And I thought about it when I was talking to God and saying my prayers. I'm not going to say any of that. Some of the things, the information that I've been getting... I'm going to say what God had on my heart for me to say tonight. That's what I'm going to say. I'm so grateful to the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. I don't know about anybody here sitting in here tonight. And I've met some wonderful people since I've been here. I've met some people from Cleveland. I've met some people from Chicago. I've met some Philly people. I've met some wonderful people. And I want to welcome you guys, too. And thank you guys for... um. For a hug that I was getting when I was going back and forth from the convention center to my hotel. But I want to tell you guys that I love Narcotics Anonymous. And the person I am tonight is not the person that I came here being. You heard me describe how I was when I got here. I was real angry when I got here. Real misconfused and misunderstood. And trying to explain everything and trying to figure things out and trying to explain everything to you guys about this or that or how come I did this, that, and the other. Thank you. And I came in here and I continue to try to do that. Trying to fit in over here and fit in there and fit in here and fit in over there. And trying to be okay with everybody and I found out you can't be okay with everybody in here. Matter of fact, I'm not trying to be okay with everybody. I'm trying to be okay with Pam. It's taken me a long time, though, to get to that point. Had many challenges since I've been here. Some of the greatest challenges. I've had this year. This year. I've had many challenges this year. Lost a little bit, and I gained a little bit. And lost a little more, and gained a little more. And had one challenge after one challenge after one challenge after one challenge after one challenge. And one situation after one situation after one situation. Thank God for sponsorship. Thank God for sponsorship. Because I got through it and I stayed clean. And I didn't lose myself like I used to lose myself. When things happen, the longer you stay clean, I found out for me, the better you're able to deal with situations when they come. I found some freedom here in Narcotics Anonymous. I found some hope here in Narcotics Anonymous. I found out that you guys are not the most important people, and your opinion of me don't really matter. It's my opinion of me that matters. I found that out since I've been here. I've learned how to love people here. And I found out you can't do nothing about me loving you. You can't even do nothing about me liking you. It's nothing you can do about it. Matter of fact, you guys, you don't even have to give it back to me because that's my gift to you. But I stayed in Narcotics Anonymous, I fell down, got bruised a lot, put some band-aids on it, fell down again, broke down, fell down, broke down again, fell down again, broke down again, and then I had a breakthrough. And I had one breakthrough, then I had another breakthrough, then I had another breakthrough. And I kept having a breakthrough, and then I got in touch with who I am as Pam, and I found out that I like myself today. Again, I found out that your opinion of me doesn't matter. It used to be the most important person. I've even lost some people this year in my life, and I've gained some new people. But I found out that that's all a part of the process. That's what happens here in Narcotics Anonymous. You're going to gain some things, and you're going to lose some things. And you're going to gain some more things, and you're going to lose some more things. And so a lot of things are going to happen, but I found out I've gotten, I've gained some freedom here. I've got some peace here. I've learned out where it starts. It starts here with me. And I didn't think that I can do this. 
because it's like thir- Friday night when I was here, it's like, God, I'm sure there's a whole lot of people here, and I don't know if I can do this. And I'm looking around, and it's like, I still really don't think that I could do this. And some of my support group was like, Pam, you can do this. It's one other person I want to thank, too, before I forget. I don't know. I, I, I believe that everybody should have a sponsor like me and a grand sponsor, and I believe that everybody should have a sponsor and a friend like I have. I want to thank you, Carolyn, from the bottom of my heart for loving me, man, no matter what. You guys, everybody should have a friend that, man, loves you in spite of you. Don't matter what you say, what you do, because I, I believe that um, people always show you who they are, and, and I've been fortunate enough to have some people in my life that love me in spite of me, and that's what I needed. Because I've learned I'm not perfect, but I've been the best person I can be for almost the last 21 years. And it might not have met up to a whole lot of you guys' expectations, but God has been okay with it. And I'm, before I sit down, I want to thank the World Service, the board. I want to thank Michael for calling me. And it's so funny, when he called me, I thought, it's like, I know this got to be some type of joke. And I know he's not calling me. Because there's a part of me that just doesn't think that I'm enough. There's a part of me that thinks it's like, oh, well, you know, I don't deserve this. And then, you know, I have some voices in my head for some people. It's like, well, Pam, you know, how did that happen for Pam? Or why did that happen? Why not Pam? I've been here 21 years. Why shouldn't I be here? I mean, everybody has a turn. I would have never thought almost 21 years ago that I would be standing here at the World Convention in Honolulu, Hawaii, doing a main meeting, but it was God's call. It was just God's call. And it was my time, and I thank God for it. I will be forever grateful to Narcotics Anonymous. And in closing, I want to say, you know, in our symbol, we have a symbol, and it talks about it. It talks about the point of freedom. And it talks about the broader the base, the higher the freedom. And I'm free today. I am free today. Thank God for Narcotics Anonymous. And in closing, I want to say to you guys, if you can remember, as long as the ties that bind us together are stronger than those that will tear us apart, all will be well. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the two support committee members that will be doing the geographic countdown. Debbie A. and Bob P. Aloha, I'm Bob P. I'm an addict from Oahu, Hawaii. Can you hear me now? My name's Debbie and I'm an addict and I'm from right over the mountain. All right, well we get to do the fun part. We're doing a geographic countdown and I think we have a sheet here. We have, uh, I think, 38 countries that we're going to be counting down plus a whole lot of states. So let's start. How many addicts are here from Argentina? Argentina. Aruba. We can't see a thing up here, so yell and scream if you're from Aruba. Australia. Okay, how about any addicts from Bermuda? Anybody from Bermuda? Uh, Brazil. (laughs) 
Okay, do we have any addicts from Bahrain? Bahrain, right over here. How about the United Kingdom? Okay, yell and scream now so we can hear you. Any any addicts from Canada? There we go. How about Colombia? Great suggestion. Can somebody put up the lights for us so we can see you guys as you stand up? Can somebody get some lights up for us? Denmark. Okay, I'm sure somebody's working on the lights, but do we have any addicts from Germany? I know we have plenty. Over there. How about Greece? Greece, right here. Do we have any addicts here from Guam? Over here. How about Hungary? Hungary. That guy stood up four times already. How about any addicts from India? Over here. How about Indonesia? Right here. Any addicts from Ireland here? Ireland. How about Israel? <laughs> I know we have one addict from Italy over here, but is there any more in the house? I think we have some addicts here from Kuwait. Kuwait, right here. Kuwait. How about Nepal? Somebody. They're at the Ziggy Marley concert, I think. Yeah. Okay, do we have any addicts from Norway? Norway, way back there. New Zealand. Right here. From Omar. Oh. Panama. Panama, right back here. How about Peru? Over here, Peru. The Philippines. Philippines, over here. How about Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Russia. How about from South Africa? In the back. South Korea. Okay. We're getting there, guys. How about from Spain? Sweden. Sweden. How about from Switzerland? Switzerland, over there. And how about from Trinidad and Tobago? Over here. 
Abang Venezuela. Abang Venezuela. Okay, here we go. We're getting to the United States now. We're going to try to go through this quick. First one is Alabama. Alaska. Alaska over here. Arizona. Arizona. Arkansas. All right, this will be loud. California. Okay, how about Colorado? Connecticut. Connecticut, over there. Delaware. Right up front. District of Columbia. Over here. How about Florida? Georgia. Georgia. Georgia, in the house. How about Idaho? Idaho, back there. Illinois. How about Indiana? Indiana, over here. Iowa. There's one person from Iowa, I think. Two. How about Kansas? Kansas. Kentucky. Louisiana. Maine. Maryland. Massachusetts. Back here. Michigan. Minnesota. Mississippi. Missouri. Montana. Nebraska. How about Nevada? New Hampshire. Oh, right. Um, New Hampshire. New Jersey. New Mexico. Okay, I was just handed a note. We forgot Mexico. How about Mexico in the house? I'm going to do China. Okay. How about China? China right here. One guy. Okay, let's go back. New York. How about New York? North Carolina. North Dakota. Ohio. Just stick with me, Debbie. Okay, okay, okay. Oklahoma. I know we have addicts here from Oregon. Pennsylvania. (laughs) 
How about Rhode Island? South Carolina. South Dakota. Tennessee. Back there, Tennessee. Yeah. How about Texas? We'll see them in two years. Utah. Got two from Utah back here and two more over here. Vermont. Virginia. How about Washington State? West Virginia. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, back there. Sorry. Sorry. No, you go. No, you go. You go like that. Nobody wants to speak pigeon here yet like that. You go. Okay, Wyoming. Okay, ready? How about Hawaii? All right, at this time, I'd like to thank the support committee and thank everybody that made this World Convention possible. Thank you. Aloha. Just one last announcement about the, uh, the buses for the concert. Continue to load. The concert will not will not start until the last bus gets there, so everybody will see the concert. Um, and we're going to close the meeting. All right, let's, let's, we want to thank everyone again, the speakers, Pam, <clears throat> Harui, Vasily, Natalia, Horacio, and, and Luigi. We have asked Juliana from Brazil to read, We Do Recover. Uh, my name is Juliana, I'm from Brazil, and I'm an addict. I'm very honored to read to you, uh, We Do Recover in Portuguese. Uh, Nós realmente nos recuperamos. Todos nós enfrentamos os mesmos dilemas quando chegamos no fim da linha e descobrimos que não conseguimos mais funcionar como seres humanos, com ou sem drogas. O que nos resta de fazer? Parece haver apenas essa alternativa, ou continuar, da melhor maneira possível, até o amargo fim, prisão, instituição ou morte ou encontrar uma nova maneira de viver. Poucos adictos no passado chegaram até essa última opção. Os adictos de hoje são mais afortunados. Pela primeira vez na história, um caminho simples vem sendo seguido por muitos adictos e encontra-se ao alcance de todos. Trata-se de um simples programa espiritual, não religioso, conhecido como Narcóticos Anônimos. Thank you. Very quickly, somebody has left behind a Targus camera and case. Please see me after the meeting. Okay, can we circle around? Give everybody, everybody a chance to uh, line up. By the way, I need to uh, very quickly, I, f I left out a couple of the su support committee members that I forgot to announce. They were also DJ, 
Rose, and Jerry, and Bob W. Thank you so much for uh, all your efforts. Ann Berwin, thank you. Can we take a moment of silence, please? And we'll follow it with third step prayer. Many of us have said, Take my will and my life. I will shine Work, work it. Right on, folks. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please help us improve our ranking so others can find us by putting a review on Stitcher, iTunes, or your favorite podcast index. Napot is ad-free thanks to the folks supporting the show with a dollar more per month. If you enjoy listening, you can join them by going to notpot.xyz and looking for the donate link. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.